Hello, and welcome to Pool Manager. If you still need help after watching this video, please see our documentation site. Also note there's a universal search feature in the upper right corner that will search both our docs and forums. Or visit our forums and post for assistance. I just imported Pool Manager into a clean scene. I could have chosen an import time to ignore the example files, but you can delete them at any time without worrying about affecting Pool Manager. The first thing I'm going to need is a prefab. So I'm just going to take a sphere and uh, I'll leave it called sphere and just drag and drop it in to the project folder and then I can delete it from my scene. So now I have the sphere prefab. Uh, I'm going to make a new game object and I'll just call this shapes pool click add component and drop down a spawn pool and I'm just going to call this shapes. Now I can actually use it from code at this point but for demo purposes and because quite often I want to preload prefabs I'm just going to hit the plus sign here and drag and drop my sphere and I'm going to tell it that when this spawn pool loads I want to preload 10 objects. Uh, and there's some options here, you can look in the docs to see what they do. Now if I start the game, you should see 10 spheres appear below our shapes pool. Uh, they are parented just for scene organization only. Pool Manager does not manage parenting for you, that's just because uh, different games have different use cases and sometimes you know, parenting would be a waste of performance. So just for scene organization, uh, you can turn that off at any time by uh, just clicking Dome Reparent on the pool. But it can be quite nice just to have all your shapes appear under your shapes pool. And of course I can have multiple prefabs so I could have a sphere and a cube and they'll all appear under here. Uh, you also notice that they were named by appending a number to the end. And that's just so during debugging, if something's going wrong with one of your scripts, you can actually see what pooled instance is actually causing the error. And that's pretty much it, you're ready to go. You can just go into your code and start replacing instantiate and destroy with pool manager's spawn and despawn code. Spawn pools can also be made into a prefab. This is great for situations where you might be managing a level and loading things over time. So if I just start the game, and of course you would do this through code, but if I instantiate the shapes pool, it will instantly preload. And also if I delete it, it will automatically clean up all of its instances as well. There are a lot of features not covered in this video, both in the components as well as the API. So please do read through our feature set and have a look at the docs. A couple examples are instances which exist in the scene, uh, but are then managed by a pool at runtime. We also have logging features where you can log at multiple levels to help figure out what's going on with a particular prefab or pool. We also have the ability to automatically play particles or audio and then have them automatically despawn when complete. We also have the ability to limit instances where they just simply will stop spawning above a certain amount or limit with first in first out where the oldest one will start despawning in order to spawn the next one. Thank you for your interest in Pool Manager. We'll see you on the forums.